Hello and thank you oh, very yes. much for coming in. Thank you for having me. My name is Roland Riveron. I'm a percussion, drums and sometime singer in the Idiot Bastard Band that comprises Aid Edmondson, Phil Jupiter, and Neil Innes and myself. Could you tell us a bit about how the band got together? Right, the band got together in a very sort of haphazard way. I think it was pretty much Aid had uh, a couple of original songs, maybe three, four funny, humorous songs that he wanted to um, road test, really. And he was working with Phil Jupiter, who was um, uh, the pair of them were doing the singing, uh, doing the singing pad for Monty Python, uh, not Monty Python, for the um, Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. And that's how they met Neil Innes, because Neil Innes is the man behind the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. Neil Innes is also from the Ruttles and, you know, Urban Space Man, and uh, he's the, reportedly the seventh member of Monty Python. Anyway, the three of them were touring around the country together in the Bonzo Dog Reunion Band, and they sort of hatched an idea to get together because each of them had some numbers that they wanted to um, play in public. So they conscripted uh, myself and Simon Brint. We, uh, myself and Simon, were raw sex for French and Saunders way back, and we used to do a lot of music for the comic strip. Um, uh, in fact, all the music for the comic strip presents series and films. So we all got together, um, and it was a meeting in a pub, the Wilmington Arms in Rosebury Avenue in London, and we got together and we thought, do we all fancy playing? We do all fancy playing. Um, do we all fancy rehearsing? No, we don't. So what we did was um, various people just emailed each other songs, you know, original songs and covers that people had decided that they'd like to do from Jake Thackeray, from the Bonzos, from um, way back some 50s do what weird sort of promotional things. Um, and basically, we hired a room in the Wilmington Arms at the back, the back room that's got a stage and a bar. And we all got together and we charged, I think, a fiver and we made it clear that we were just rehearsing. But by all means, come along and sit and watch us rehearse. So we've never rehearsed. All we've ever done is perform. So does this make you a little bit nervous about standing in front of 15,000 people at Bingley? Um, when it comes to audience numbers, um, we were playing to 60 in the Wilmington Arms. Wow. Um, we just about managed that. Not 60,000. Not 60,000, <laughs> not 600. Um, uh, but um, it's going to be a different kettle of fish, I think, uh, uh, doing this festival. Because, as I say, we've only ever played in pubs where we've uh, tried to ensure that everyone's, you know, very, very relaxed before we carry on rehearsing. So you'll be trying to relax 15,000 people. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, we, we did a, a rash of gigs a year, oh, pretty much just over a year, a year. ago, at uh, the Wilmington Arms. Uh, we did about six or 12 gigs there. Then we, then the summer happens and everyone's, because of the, the, line, the nature of the lineup, everyone's gone their different ways in the summer. And we got back together again in the autumn and this time we went to the Water Rats in Grays Inn Road, which is a very celebrated uh, music venue. And we did another four or five gigs there again with no rehearsal, but they seemingly uh, went, got better and better. They went from strength to strength. We honestly surprised ourselves, I've got to say that. Um, so then we thought, hang on a minute, we probably have got something here. You know, we won't just have this as a slightly self-indulgent every Monday, go to a pub, play, enjoy ourselves and, you know, uh, and go home. We thought, no, let's, let's actually stand up and say, we are going to play some numbers that we know from beginning to end and we're not going to use crib sheets. That's going to be the big, the big sort of leap forward doing these festivals that we're doing and, and a tour that we're doing in the autumn is going to actually be stand on stage without a book in front of you reading all the chords and all the words. So that's going to be a departure and that'll be fun. And if it's in front of 6,000 people, well, we'll just shit ourselves. <laughs> Six? Sixteen. Sixteen thousand. <laughs> oh, right. Well, they well, really have now? been no. openly pooping up their pants. <laughs> Now, I have to ask you, which I think this is a fair question for you guys, yeah. is heckling. Yeah. You must get it a lot, you must enjoy it, and you must have some really good heckles. Um, yes. What um, happens when you're singing? And uh, Well, we have had a few heckles. We placed, we, we did a, a gig in Harlesden the other day. No, Harlow, in Harlow, just outside London. Uh, and that was, uh, that was a slightly tough crowd. Um, but Phil Jupiter is up front, a large man, quite intimidating. <laughs> He's pretty good at the, the put-downs, you know. It's a case of somebody heckles when we finish the number and he'll just go, mate, if you want to be a part of the band, come to the rehearsals. <laughs> we rehearse. <laughs> and the other one, there was something happened the other night and he just stared at this woman who was completely off her face and just went, go home. <laughs> right, the next number we're going to do... <laughs> 
<laughs> Lovely. Well, we look forward to lots of heckles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds as if all the comedy people are very good friends. Yes, they, they yes. For because um, well, Simon Brent and myself, we were we were doing uh, as raw sex. We were providing all the all the music for the comic strip, so we were interacting with that lot. And Dawn and Jenny did, had you know the first two or three series on BBC French and Saunders. We were supplying the music and doing quite a lot of envision comedy with them. Mm. Then we did a big year long, a big theatre tour, just the four of us. Um, so we sort of cemented our relationship there. So do you think? It's easier for you guys then to put things together in terms of, uh, rather than artistic clashes, you have to pull yourself out of laughter, out of laughter fits and cut folks, whereas other bands might split up and fight. As regards to the Idiot Bastard Band, um, people come to the table and say, I've got this idea for a song. Either it's a cover, you know, like a Jake Thackeray song or something like that, or they say, I've written this, you know, original song. And um, they're always good. There's no, none of them have been rejected. Um, it's a very, very casual sort of... Um, you know, ergonomic thing. It's not. It's no, not. No, uh, there's no pressure. Then. There's no pressure. There's no prima donnas. There's no hissy fits. Um, sometimes Neil. Sometimes Neil plays slightly too loud. We tell him to turn down. He's in his sixties. He can barely hear us. He says, you know, he says he has turned down, but we know he hasn't. So Yorkshire. Yorkshire. And Bingley. Place. Bingley, especially. <laughs> Aid is actually from Bradford. Is he? He's an old from Bradford Grammar. I understand. He's an oh, old boy. Good. Yes. Yeah, so okay. he knows it very well. He's lost the accent. He may never have had one. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, yeah, I don't think he has an accent. But anyway, go on. All oh, right, so he's from there. So that, that'll, be, that'll be an emotional um, journey. journey for him, going full circle. Yep. For me, I, think, I don't think it's going to be the first time. I feel sure I've been there on my travels, one way or another. It sounds gorgeous. Uh, Bradford, I know. Bingley. I'm going to become very, very acquainted with now. I'm bringing the caravan. I'm virtually living there. It is a small uh, town village in the town, countryside. Town so it's, village, it's in the heart. It's in the heart of the Yorkshire countryside. Oh, good. Yeah, it's and it's picturesque. picturesque. It's picturesque. Yeah, Pennine I'm country. sure I know it. Bronte sisters, that kind of. Oh, will they be there? Romance. Great. They will. They will be there with Charles Dickens, I'm sure. Good <laughs> lord. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll try and sort out some period costume. <laughs> so back to music then. Mm. Your favourite music. Your favourite genre. My favourite genre of music for a long while in my teens was jazz, really. I missed the whole of the punk. Um, 78, wasn't it? Punk arrived on our doorsteps. Yep. 78 to about 83, I was pretty much every night at Ronnie Scott's club, watching and listening to everything and everyone that was there. So um, out in the streets of the, uh, London's Heady West End, punk was happening, but uh, I was listening to Buddy Rich and uh, Betty Carter and people like that at Ronnie's. So I missed it all. Transvision Vamp came about because I interviewed uh, the lead singer Wendy James uh, in the Thames in a, a show I had called River On, where I interviewed people in the Thames. I was floating around in the Thames with a dinner jacket on and a microphone, and people would be ferried by boat out to me, plopped in the water, we'd bob about and chat, talk about videos and whatever. Wendy was the only girl that um, consented to um, spending all night. It was November, sleeting to snow, uh, spending three hours in a freezing cold Thames being interviewed. Uh, we did the interview and then um, I moved in with her for about 18 months. <laughs> so we were husband That's and good. wife for a long while. Um, I think I played on a couple of her tracks. The going, going Live uh, was on back then, Saturday morning kids show. I um, so I, we recorded in the Thames on Friday and then on Saturday she said, uh, oh, we haven't got a drummer, we're going on, uh, going live. Uh, will you come and play? So I said, yeah, all right. So I was, you know, I met her in the Thames on Friday, playing in a band on Saturday. If you had a fantasy wish list or wish, who would you like to perform with at Bingley this September? Fantasy, I wish, oh, who would I like to perform with? Um, oh, difficult to say. Um, Frank Sinatra would be good, because he swings. Um, that would be a good one. Uh, sadly, he's no uh, longer with us. Um, Viv Stanchel from the Bonzos. We do a couple of Viv's numbers in our set, so it would be amazing if, you know, halfway through the set, Viv actually walked on. Maybe we can sort it out in a hologram, I don't know. But um, if he just came on and did uh, um, Trouser Press Baby or something like that, it would be gorgeous. So that would, that would be a firm favourite. Joyce Grenfell, always good to play with Joyce. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Another personal question, going back a bit to Wiki, I think. Um, 2007, yes. North London, mobile phone protest. 
on a church. Was that you? Or was that someone else posting about you? <laughs> no, there was um, uh, up, up where I live in in, in Muswell Hill. There, they were gonna this church. It was obviously on, on its uppers. Didn't have any money. Uh, obviously not a Catholic church. Um, said um, was was going to pay was going to be paid a lot of money to have inside. So you couldn't actually see it, but we knew it was there. Inside the, the, the spire of this church, they were going to put a massive great big mast, phone mast, and word got out and the people in, in, around and about in North London there in N10, they weren't happy. Um, they got in touch with me, dragged me down um, to be something of a mouthpiece for the whole event. Um, I don't, to this day, I think there still are only redundant bells in that uh, belfry. There's no, there's no mast, so um, job done. Well done. <laughs> and finally, I think, the thing that's all over the uh, internet at the moment is mm. your dancing. Oh yes, that was amazing. Oh. Congratulations, you looked superb. Bless you. It what really a what a good. what a feat of um, endurance that was. Um, I it was let's dance let's dance for sport relief, um, and they asked me if I'd uh, would mind doing a, a number. I they gave me a couple of examples uh, of uh, uh, possibles. George Michael's, uh, the gay one, where he come outside, his pro protest song about being arrested. And they, they want me to dress up as a, you know, a, a gay p policeman. I said no, uh, pretty st straight on. And then, uh, can't get you out of my mind or head, uh, Kylie Minogue. They said, what about doing that one? Uh, so I'd had to dress up as Kylie Minogue. Again, I said no. I said no, flatly. I, and then I said, do you know what? I've seen a video. It's quite popular. It's a sort of middle-aged man, and he looks like he's just strolling around a hotel. Why don't I do that one? And they said, ah, Christopher Walken. Yes, um, weapon of choice. I said, yeah, that looks easy. I'll do that. It's not easy. Okay. I didn't realise Christopher Walken's a professional trained dancer. He makes it look so easy. And also, I was brought in in case anybody hurt themselves during the four weeks of the performing. And I could just jump in at the last minute and replay, you know, as a replacement. And then at the end of the last episode, last series, last uh, programme, I'd actually go on and do my piece if I hadn't already, you know, filled a gap. So I was very much just there as a reserve, mm. but managed to steal it from under it. It was everyone's... great. Oh, and, thank you. And any chance of a bit of a repeat of that at Bingley? If, um, if... Sadly, the knees have gone. <laughs> Even if <laughs> the... we all ask and... Um, Many pretty pleasers? I might strike a pose. There, 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 we'll see what the, uh, there might we'll see be, what the fans say. There it? might be an eight bar homage to Weapons of Choice. That would be absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not at all. Thank you. And I'm looking see forward you. to seeing everybody.